Good morning. Uh, I'm working on an approach to urban agriculture called Third Millennium Farming, which from now on I'll abbreviate as 3MF. 3MF is about using city biowastes like grey water and black water to feed to microcrops such as algae and grass. Additional biowastes such as compost and industrial waste can also be used as microcrops to feed to micro livestock or insects, which are then humanely euthanized, baked, pulverized, and turned into protein powder, which is a new experimental ingredient which I'm calling protein flour. My work focuses on the architectural, urban, and infrastructural design implications that grafting this type of farming system would have on our cities. Uh, so for the next few minutes, why don't we forget about the present and uh, try to imagine what this kind of city could look like. As my plane is about to land, I flip through my research file and find an early plan for transforming Toronto into a 3MF city. It's the year 2050 and Toronto is on the cutting edge of the 3MF revolution. I'm the director of urban farming in Moscow, where we've just begun to experience our first food shortages. So I've come here to Toronto to see how 3MF works here in a cold climate city just like mine. As darkness falls, the city glows green. At night, the bioreactors are artificially lit by wide-spectrum LEDs. Algae are a tough plant that can sustain the 24-hour growth. It wasn't until Toronto cleaned up its bioway streams that people realized they're packed with nutrients and fertilizers that can be used for plants. Shortly after, algae farming exploded onto the urban scene, feeding off of the city's own bio-wastes, sunlight, and CO2 leached from the city's air. As I wake up, I roll back the curtains of my hotel room window and I catch my first glimpse of Toronto's glistening surfaces. The devices, these devices are solar hybrid concentrators used to focus sunlight to a single point at which point it's transported via fiber optics through the non-transparent skin of the building into the micro crop farms on the inside. Solar generated electricity and now pure sunlight have become the new lifeblood running through the arteries of this city. Today I'm touring Ontario Place, an experimental 3MF community for people willing to give up old lifestyles and invest in one that tries to find a more ethical way to coexist on this planet. As I enter the restaurant pavilion, I see people eating all kinds of insect foods. I still don't understand how people can eat insects, but then again, 25 years ago, I'd cringe at the thought of eating raw fish, and today I love sushi. As we begin our tour with the architect of this tower, she starts to explain how 3MF and mixed-use buildings have a symbiotic relationship. The algae core housed inside of this building feeds off the building's bio-wastes, like grey water, black water, and exhaust air. And it's a building that lives and breathes 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that provides this uninterrupted streams of bio-wastes that these type of farming operations need. As we exit the elevator, my feet touch grass and I look up to be amazed. We join a small class of kids whose teacher is the building's urban farmer. He explains that they grow aqua crops like algae and terra crops such as grass, vines, and shrubs, which are all used to produce green biomass for the building's micro-livestock farms. We enter the micro-livestock farms and the architect explains why they bother using insects for food. The main reason is that insects are cold-blooded, and as a result, they don't spend any energy heating their body, which means that for every pound of food that insects eat, they're up to five times more efficient at converting it into meat than any of the livestock that we currently use. Our last stop on the tour is the local food market. The architect tells me they're always experimenting with new species of insects and new recipes, and in a city like Toronto with many small communities, each of them develop their own unique 3MF cuisines. As we leave Ontario Place and walk back through the restaurant pavilion, I come across this here's winning recipe for the UN's food ration contest. It's a single cookie that meets an adult's nutritive and calorie requirements for a day. I pick up a cookie and take a bite. And as I do, new guests that are just entering the pavilion look at me in disbelief as I eat my first insect food. Thank you. My I'm really interested in urban agriculture, so I thought it was a pretty intriguing concept. My question is, what kind of traction does this idea have? Is it really pie in the sky right now, or are you getting uptake or interest from policymakers or industry? Um, about three years ago, it was totally pie in the sky. I almost flunked out of my master's program when I presented it for my final project. And, uh, but, <laughs> but now, four years later, I guess it's been four, it's uh, gaining a surprising amount of momentum. The UN has its own uh, food insect uh, in initi initiative. Uh, there's a few experts even here at McGill, Professor Koch, uh, that is a bioresource engineer. He's interested in using insects as food. And there's all kinds of online communities that are starting to form and people that are interested in eating insects food uh, email me all the time actually and whenever there's an exhibit with it, uh, it's a surprising thing. I didn't think people would be that open to it but there, you know, there was a chef at one of the Nuit Blanche exhibits we did and he was cooking up uh, crickets with chili powder and uh, about Four or five thousand people tried a cricket order that night, most of them for the first time. So <laughs> it seems to be getting getting momentum. <laughs>